When you go into tech school in the service, you're practicing on dummies all the time, plastic dummies. You give it, you're showing them how to do sucking chest hole wounds, CPR, whatever. And you go through the manuals, and it's all in a book. But when you deal with a live person, a person who is breathing, who's, who's been, limbs have been blown off, whose body, 95% of their body has been burned from jet fuel, or shrapnel wounds where some small fragments of a bomb has blown whole pieces of their body off and the person is in pain or their condition is so bad that in less than 24 hours that we were betting who was gonna be dead. That to me was one of the most eye-opening experiences. And the first night that I was there and I had already had a patient and we had a unit which was called the holdover unit, all the patients who would not be stabilized, we had to see if they were gonna be alive the next morning. So during our eight hour shift, we would make bets to who would be dead or who would be alive. And most of those patients were stabilized with morphine, so they didn't have no pain. Some of them were badly conscious, some of them couldn't even talk. But at the same time, when we did their vital signs, most times if you got a, a small pulse or you felt the air, you knew they were still alive. I think. The most shocking thing to me was to come back, I'll never forget it, in one of my shifts, two died. And that's what made me realize that war can kill you or you can be forever changed, which I realized then, I thought then, of course, I was going to die. And that made me realize as a medic that I couldn't save people, which is what we had been trained for. All I could do was help stabilize them.